Well, San Francisco may become the first city in the country to ban flame retardant chemicals in furniture and children's products. Legislation was introduced Tuesday at the Board of Supervisors meeting. Now, flame retardants are intended to slow the spread of fire. But for decades, some of the most commonly used retardants have been linked to serious health concerns, including cancer and developmental delays. Now, some of the chemicals are found in high levels inside the human body, especially studies find in children and nursing mothers. Still, the chemical industry does defend these retardants, insisting they save lives and provide valuable time to escape from a fire. Now, joining us today is former state senator Mark Leno, now running for mayor. You didn't introduce the San Francisco City Ordinance, but you have introduced four separate pieces of flame retardant legislation. One passed, which now requires that uh, furniture come with notification labels telling you if there are retardants or if there aren't retardants. Correct. You've got a lot of background on this. So let me ask you first, what are the implications? Could a San Francisco city ordinance ultimately impact California or the country? So having fought the chemical industry for nearly 10 years in Sacramento, right. I have my battle scars to prove it all. But yes, San Francisco could lead the nation in this. It would not be the first time. Think of banning cigarettes in restaurants. We banned mercury thermometers here in San Francisco. We provided domestic partners for same-sex couple mm. benefits. Right. We also uh, provided equal access to the county health plan for transgender employees. So it's amazing how a small town like San Francisco can lead the way on any number of issues and change the way not only business but government operates across the country. Now, it's not going to be an easy fight. So you actually have a lot of experience, as you mentioned. This is why he's here dealing with the chemical industry, which successfully killed three of your four bills. Yes. In fact, we have a, uh, a flyer that was circulated. Opponents of your bill circulated this flyer, and it shows uh, a child being saved from a burning building, and it calls it a deadly mistake, your ordinance, a deadly mistake. And I believe they successfully did kill AB 706, one of your first pieces of, yes. of proposed legislation. So this ordinance is going to uh, is going to face those same opponents as well this time around as retailers who in San Francisco presumably won't be able to sell anything that does have retardants limiting their stock. Of course, it puts more more flame retardant free products on the market, but don't you think they're going to have a double opposition? How hard is it going to be to get this passed? I think it has a great chance here in San Francisco, but yes, uh, the chemical industry spent about six or seven million dollars to kill our first bill. And in the context of Sacramento, that's a lot of money to invest in just one piece of legislation, given there are thousands of bills introduced right. each year. They spent it on full page newspaper advertisements, television commercial, radio commercial, robocalls, mailers, and all of it was suggesting that if you vote for Leno's legislation, your child will die in a fire. <laughs> they were selling fear. Right. And Keep it in works. mind, this is a multi-billion dollar industry did not want government suggesting that their product was dangerous. Of course, the chemical industry couldn't come to committee and say, vote no on this bill. So they set up a fraudulent front group called Citizens or Californians for Fire Safety. And if you went to their website, you would think it was a group, a collaboration of teachers and students and parents and fire marshals and all these good people. So how does that impact the city ordinance? How does, I mean, those are, you still have those same opponents, I assume, against this bill. And then now you're, you're throwing in retailers who are going to... Uh, feasibly suffer because now they've got to come up with new stock. And, and in some cases, uh, in the case of car seats, there's only one car seat on the market that currently does not have flame retardants. So that could mean that they couldn't sell any car seat other than that one. Well, as the supervisors debate this, and keep in mind there are two components, as I understand the proposed legislation, both upholstered furniture as well as juvenile products. So mm -hmm. upholstered furniture, which is what I had worked on for so many right. years, has these chemicals inside the polyurethane foam cushions within the piece of furniture right. we're talking about. And so uh, there, I believe, about 75% of the marketplace now, as a result of what we did in Sacramento, is chemical free, because that's where the market is leading. That's what consumers want, chemical free furniture. Uh, with regard to the, the uh, juvenile products, mm -hmm. if it's not entirely available at this point, 
supervisors might want to stage the implementation until consumers would have choice. They're going to have to look at it very carefully. And that's how these bills or these uh, proposals sort of work their way through. So I do want to point out that we have a statement from the chemical industry, which does note that flame retardants are subject to review by the EPA. So basically, consumers don't have to choose, they say, between chemical safety and fire safety. They can have both. Now, this statement, and I've seen it actually throughout my reporting on flame retardants, and I've, I've been interviewing you for years on the topic. Um, this statement implies that, well, the EPA reviews these chemicals, so they must be safe for use if they're already out there in products. Well, oh, keep in mind there are about 80,000, that's right, 80,000 untested chemicals in our daily consumer products. So for the EPA, which this president wants to completely decimate by cutting all of its funding, how many thousands of years would it take for all of these chemicals which are subject to EPA review to actually get review. And in fact, they're saying you can be both chemically safe and fire safe, and we are neither. We are not chemically safe now, and these chemicals, in fact, do not even keep you safe. When they burn, they convert to carbon monoxide, so firefighters are dying in f fighting fires, not from flames, but from the chemicals that are emitted when these chemicals burn. Right. And in fact, uh, Calif San Francisco firefighters have set up their own cancer prevention foundation because hundreds of San Francisco firefighters have dealt with the very cancers caused by these chemicals when they burn. They convert to known carcinogens. So these are very dangerous chemicals, and yes, they can impede your child's IQ development. They are there, endocrine disruptors. There are definitely disruptors. lots of studies yes. that, yeah, that, that talk about the concerns here. Um, but final question, do you, think this will, do you think this will pass? Do you I'm, think that there will be a San Francisco City Ordinance and we'll be the first in the country to ban these chemicals? I don't know that it will look exactly like it does at its introduction, mm -hmm. but some very significant form of it, I believe there will be political will at the Board of Supervisors to pass it. All right, well, thank you, sir, for coming in and providing all this context. <laughs> your decade, <laughs> decades of context. I'll show you the <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you have them.